Good evening, and hi, it's me, Donna M. Butler. You just parked it on a Wednesday night, the best place, as I always say, you can be on a Wednesday night, right here in the virtual Corvette with me, again, Donna M. Butler, and the lovely Siobhan Shaw. Hey, babe, how are you doing this Wednesday night? I'm doing awesome. I'm all uh, all ready to take this show on the road and talk about how technology has changed our lives so much, and that that it's such a rapid change right now that you know you have to really keep up with the latest and greatest. And and as we were talking just before the show with our guest, I'll introduce him in a second. Uh, I realized that we're very trend trendy because we're way ahead of the curve. We're actually doing video casts um, where people are still trying to catch up on what a podcast is. So there we are. We finally got something where we're ahead of everybody else. <laughs> I know if we could just figure out the little tweaks that we need to, to uh, make with this thing. I think we'll be okay. So do you have anything to rev your engine about before I bring on our guest? Actually, no. Well, you know, I'm all thumbs when it comes to technology. So, you know, maybe I want to rev my engine on why is it so doggone hard to program your television with a universal remote. <laughs> there was a time you just had one remote. Now you have a remote for the freaking TV, the freaking DV, you know, DVD player. You have remotes for everything. And then you think you're smart and you go buy a universal remote. And then I don't know how to program that to my television. So what the heck? You know, I'm revving my engines. Make directions easier. <laughs> Give us better tutorials. Help me, please get this right because I tell you it took me a week to even get to be able to turn my TV on with one remote. You a know week. I I totally agree with you because we have major issues here with the remote and the changing the channels or not being able to change the channels or even the turn the TV on or turn it off and the digital <laughs> box and the this and the that and the, all the different apparatuses. The router. The, yeah, it was the router and the, the infrared. I'm learning so much because the internet is great. It's a piece of technology that I really like because not only can people see us talking every Wednesday night, I can actually ask it questions and it usually spits out an answer that I can manage and, and work with. So I uh, love the internet for that, but the technology, the actual apparatus, mm -mm, don't like no. them. You yeah. know, they, whoever invents a remote that makes it really, really simple is going to make millions. Right. I mean, I had to have all these codes, a code for the television, a code for the DVD player. Are you kidding me? What do I need all these codes? Just pick it up, flick it, and let's watch some TV. So <laughs> I'm revving my engine on that, and I'm so glad Naresh is here to help us clear up all this craziness about this. So yeah, and and Naresh Visa is a friend of ours, and he was last on our show on our podcast on Blog Talk Radio four years ago. He tells us that was a really really long time ago, and since then he's been very successful. He's really a uh, one of the top uh, producers in podcasting and radio, and and he's written a book about. Podcastnomics, how to make millions out of podcasting, is basically what it's about. Welcome back to the show, and now you are uh, on a video cast with us. What's that like for you? <laughs> Thanks, Shabon. Thanks, Donna. It's great to be back. It's been, yeah, four years. Wow, I can't believe how uh, how time has, everything has changed four years ago. I know. I think you guys were living in different places. I was living in different places, doing different things, and a lot's happened since then, so thanks for inviting me on. We're well, glad we're so, to have you. We're so excited because you, you're an author now, and I think that that's thrilling because uh, we we tried our hand at being authors and wrote a book, Journey of the Soul Car. So we have something else in common other than being podcasters. Yeah, we're podcasters and authors. That's that's pretty awesome. Yeah. But the yeah, majority cool. majority of people don't know what a podcast is. They look at you like. Huh? So that, that's the first thing we want to touch on tonight when we're talking about the rapid changes in technology is that that those local yokel radio stations, even the national radio stations that we've been listening to, um, and the television at Donna's house <laughs> that we can hear in the background. Is that yours? That is, is that? I, but keep going, and I'll find out. Okay, because we sure I'll hear I'll find it. out. I'm going to signal off camera here. 
and say, hey, can we turn the TV down over there? Yeah, just turn it down. I, I just signaled off camera. Okay. And, you know, that's technology, you know? That's right. So that, in the background, think, we can hear. Right. Get... You think no one can hear because of the headsets and because of, you know, where they're at, but it's just like a big hollow hole over there. It's just bouncing back. And I couldn't hear it, so I'm glad you guys could. Well, <laughs> we could. And, and the thing is, is... I forgot where I was. So somebody, somebody saved me. Oh my goodness! No, we were yeah, just yeah. talking about a podcast and how things have changed. And so, yeah, a lot of people just don't even know what a podcast is. And Naresh, can you bring people up to speed on what a podcast is? And then what we'll do is we'll kind of move into all the other technology that it's, has had huge changes, leaps and bounds over the past even decade. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So to get started on what a podcast is, it's, it is essentially program. This can be a music program, a talk program. In this case, Siobhan and, and Donna, you guys had your own podcast where you were talking to each other and interviewing guests. But it's a program that is made available in digital format on the internet, and it is available for automatic download. So the key words, I know, I know I said a lot, but the key words are uh, internet, program, download. So uh, that's essentially what a podcast is. However, it is audio. It's not video. What we're doing right now is video, so this would not be considered a podcast. It is audio only. So think of it as radio, like listening to the radio, except you're not listening to your car radio or your uh, alarm clock radio. You're listening to the radio on the internet, but it's not through a station. That's essentially what a podcast is. So when you're in your car or you're, you wake up to your radio and there's a station playing, it's usually your local station. It could be a talk show. It could be the morning show, something like that. And they're playing music and there's all kinds of things going on and contests and just local people being interviewed. That is dying, isn't it? And is it the podcast that's changing that, or is there something else happening there? So what you just described is terrestrial radio, AM, FM, terrestrial radio. And I'm not talking about satellite radio, which is now popular, popularly known as a Sirius XM. Uh, now, terrestrial radio, the AM, FM radio that we all grew up listening to on our car rides, probably listen to it every day to get our news, music, etc., Yes, that is dying. It is absolutely dying. And it's not just podcasting that's contributing to that death. It's really a variety of new media and technology that is taking away people from listening to that AM, FM radio. That technology includes audiobooks, smartphones that have Bluetooth compatibility, Hmm. So uh, people are listening now to playlists that they make rather than radio stations that have commercials in between. People are listening to uh, podcasts on their phones. The iPhone comes with a with a podcast app, and you can connect that to your to your car via Bluetooth and listen to that. Uh, audiobooks. So the publishing industry has changed tremendously. People now aren't buying paperback books as much, paperback and hardback books as much. They prefer uh, digital versions or even audiobook versions. So there is a lot that is taking away from terrestrial radio, and podcasting is a major, major, major reason for it. Are we becoming lazy? I, I, mean, know. I, know, I know this is a good thing. But are we becoming, getting the attitude of saying we don't have to go anywhere to do anything? I mean, I'm doing a show from various parts, you know, in my home right now. I've even walked from one part to the other to, you know, avoid echoing sounds. But, I mean, are we becoming, you know, complacent and, and kind of, you know, getting that kind of attitude where we're just saying, oh, we can just get it on our phone. Oh, what's, what's why, why do we need to pick up a book? We can just, you know, pick up our iPhone. Yeah. I don't know if it's laziness. I actually, uh, I'm of the camp that all of this innovation and technology makes our lives easier. So, for example, yeah. uh, it it I am I work at I'm come to you from Baltimore, Maryland. I work from my 
place out of Baltimore, and I'm able to do that because of the technology. Ten years ago, this would have been difficult. Twenty years ago, this would have been impossible. Absolutely <laughs> impossible. And it's because of the iPhone, the smartphones, the connectivity, the Skypes, the the pot, the audiobooks, the podcasts. I'm able to download books straight from Amazon to my iPad and read it. I can do all that from from my bed, from my couch. Whereas previously, you had to go into a Borders bookstore, drive all the way search around to find the book, pay for it, come back. It was a pretty tedious process. Um, <laughs> does it make us more lazy? Absolutely. It does make us more lazy, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Well, you're right, because a podcast, even like the video cast, right, it's archived, so you can go and check it out anytime you want. And there's millions and millions of options. For instance, in your book, Podcastnomics, everybody right. should go to com. I'll try to put that up for everybody. It's certainly on the Attitude Shift uh, page. I'll make sure I get that up there. So go up and get his book. But the thing is, is, in your book, you actually talked about you see, I shouldn't go off on little tangents. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> this is the second time I've completely lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm working too much. I have way too much on my plate. But that's another aspect of it. Is is we're supposed to have, we have all this technology, and it's supposed to make our lives simpler, right? Like podcasts, we can w listen to them anytime. That's one of the benefits of podcasting. Is is you can go and find the podcast you want, and you can listen right, to it. Right. Right. Uh, a year from now, four years from now, everybody can go back to our Blog Talk Radio page, the Attitude Shift on Blog Talk Radio, and find our interview with you from four years ago. It's still out there, right? Yes. So, so that's the that's the benefit, but it can all this technology coming at you and all the innovation, all the changes, all the shifts because they're moving really fast. You know, are. iPhone. I, there was iPhone. There's iPhone one, two, three, four, <laughs> six. Six. Like, <laughs> how many iPhones do you need, <laughs> right? So, yeah. so it's constantly. There's people you see in the news. People are lining up at, at the Best Buy to get their newest iPhone. It's crazy. So, so doesn't that make our lives more stressful? As it, it just a lot of people have that attitude where it's like enough already it's way too much this new technology stop already it it, it really depends on the person for mm -hmm. I, I love the technology anything that makes my life easier and I guess Donna anything that makes me easier <laughs> is is a good thing in my opinion and I think that's what people well, want and that's why well, yeah. so many individuals have the iPhone uh, because it has so it, it, it can do so many cool things. It's like having a computer in your hand. So it is. I'm a fan I of it, but, but like I said, it, it varies person to person. It varies but then, person but then person. people have desktops. They have laptops. They have iPads. They have iPhones. Mm -hmm. uh, some people I know, like friends that are working in direct sales, they have their Galaxy phone or whatever they call mm -hmm. it, Galaxy S. Then they're given an iPhone, so they're carrying like two or three phones around. But on my Facebook page, we were just talking about it. A few of them, one's a, one's a roadside mechanic. Like he goes out, it's like a tow truck driver. He has two phones. But then I look at it too. It kind of goes back to what he said, though. What Nari said is it is convenient to have, you know, these things. I don't really look at my phone, and, and I do have an iPhone, and I don't look at it as a, just a phone. You know, I look at no, it. No, it's a sleep aid. <laughs> it, it is. It's my. It definitely is my sleep aid. I she mean, it's my library. It under a pillow. Uh, it's quiet. <laughs> it's my library. It's my map. It's you know. I, I don't even use a laptop right now. All I do is use this phone. I mean, I'm doing the show with this phone, and so it does make it easier. But I see what you're saying too. When you look around, and you know, there's. One for work, and then there's one for the kids, and then there's one for, um, you know, whatever business I'm doing. You know, we start having that. I think I, I start worrying about our attitudes. I start worrying about how we look at life, and sometimes writing letters sometimes takes the place. Don't I watch my yeah. my 25 year old daughter is impressing the heck out of me because she's writing letters and putting them in the mail, and I'm just kind of looking like wow. 
<laughs> yeah. And I could, yeah, see, I couldn't do that. It was Donna's birthday. Happy belated birthday. It was her, yep, her Donna, birthday on, on the 26th. And last year she was in New York City at the New York Television Film Festival with her Living a Be a Loca uh, project. But this year she was home. And so last year was pretty cool because that was a birthday present extraordinaire. And I was, like, talking to her on a hangout every day while she was there. And this time <laughs> I had so much going on that I actually forgot her birthday until the end of the day. And of course I did my very best to cover up <laughs> by saying I made it like I really and she knows I this is the truth. This is real Ron right now. Heck yeah. It I is. Completely it was forgot. such a cool gift. I, I screwed up and I completely forgot. I did know that I had planned a video and I just didn't get around to it. So at the end of the day, there I am Facebooking her because there's no way I could throw a, a card in the mail. <laughs> I couldn't even get her probably an e-card at, at like midnight her time, right? I wanted to catch her birthday. So on Facebook, I was just wished her happy birthday and made it seem like it was just all planned <laughs> that way, <laughs> that I waited till the end of the day. But then instead of um, actually sending her a birthday card, because nobody ever sends anybody anything anymore, I'm now having to create video for her because you've got to, you've got to somehow capture what a card capture, would have. <laughs> capture what a card would have, right? So there I am going through all this video of Donna laughing and because I'm going to put this silly little one minute video together for her birthday of all the different laughs she has and all the different looks. And, and I mean, it may be silly, but Right. But we have that technology has allowed us to do that. So, so there's some really cool advantages to the technology. But then, have you ever tried to find a payphone if you don't have a cell phone? You know, there's a lot of things that we don't have anymore. <laughs> payphones, except payphones. in the Bahamas. <laughs> except in the Bahamas, there's payphones. There was a row of payphones, and we we're talking prior to going live that my children, my niece and my son. Uh, 10 and 11 years old walked up to it and they were just staring at it for the longest and I was like well you pick it up and they were looking at me like pick it up for what and I said it's a phone and you put money in it and they were looking at it like you put money where and then my son looked at me and he was like well why would you do that you have an iPhone and I was just like standing there going wow you know they don't know anything about a pay phone. They don't know anything about a rotary phone. But there we but, are. You know, Naresh, they don't know. Naresh, there we are. We're forced to get a cell phone. There's a seems to be a master <laughs> plan here. You know, you cannot find a pay phone. I've had to borrow <laughs> people's cell phone. I don't have a cell phone. You and, don't have a cell phone. No, I don't even have a house <laughs> phone. I only use Skype. I only use internet phone. Um, but I don't have a cell phone because look at, I, look at it's really he's expensive. Like going, I know he's just look, shocked. He's, he's like going, going what? <laughs> what did she say? What? <laughs> Can we rewind? What? <laughs> As I'm talking, I'll just <laughs> keep the camera on you. Um, no, I really don't. I don't have a cell phone. I know, isn't that crazy? But I do everything on the internet, so everything from my desktop. And I went to find a payphone. I needed to call somebody. <laughs> nope, I gotta go all the way home unless I can find some complete stranger on the street that's willing to share their phone. <laughs> could you dial a phone number for me? I don't know how many times I've actually asked people that, but I have. I'm bold enough to do that. <laughs> You're my new payphone. I'll give you a quarter. <laughs> wow. So, well, well, tell me really quickly, why don't you have a cell phone? I'm sure that's a personal choice. Oh, mostly money. <laughs> mostly money. <laughs> Yeah, most all money. Let's just <laughs> say, say it as it is. It's too expensive. And also, I live in Canada, so it's really expensive. They've got a um, they've got the market cornered here on cell phones, so um, it's very wow. expensive. Okay, I did not know that. He's You're scratching his head. He's like, wow. he is. He is. It's almost like he's like saying. Is she in a third world country? I, you know, I just said Canada. I mean, in Canada. Yeah. But I, but I don't know, and it's funny because I talked to Siobhan, and and we, you know, we worked this out. We've done pitch sessions. We've pitched 
shows with you know me having a phone and her ha not having a phone. She's managed to make it work, and that's just it. The attitude that she has. Now let me tell you, if you take my phone, I'm probably gonna kill you. Yeah, I'm my, probably my, just gonna I, kill you. <laughs> I'll say I get a lot of work done on my phone. In fact, every morning when I wake up, I spend the first hour just on my phone, catching up on the news, catching up on um, Me too. my emails. I mean, I do everything on the phone, and before I even hit my 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 computer. So yes, it's, I don't think I could even see the phone because I need reading glasses just to read the type on, you know, the font on my desktop. So I like I gotta gonna be like this, right? Um, I can't imagine now trying to read a phone. I can't even, the home phone that we do have that is for rare events, <laughs> like calling my neighbor to tell her I'll be over for wine in five minutes, um, is, is uh, I can't see the numbers. I always have to put my reading glasses on. So I'm happier when I'm, you know, when I can, you don't have you know, to see the phone. Magna, well, I can magnify the numbers, you know, on my computer phone and stuff like that. So right, I don't well, feel so well, old. To uh, to each their own. So absolutely. But, but but maybe I'm the one who's ahead of the times. Maybe cell phones will be the thing of the past, and it'll all be computerized. When that happens, we'll do mind control, okay? I think that's the next stop. But you know what? If they take away cell phones it's because they've created some kind of way, telepathic way for us to talk. Well, well, there, there, there are several technologies being worked and on right going now. On As you know, like Google Glass. For, I don't know if you've seen Google Glass, yes, but yes. those are the glasses I go around you. And um, it, right now it has a lot of functionalities. And just wait another five to ten years, and I'm sure... Those, gla those those weird glasses that people wear around, everyone's going to be wearing them, and it's going to tell them where to go when they're driving. It's going to be able to call people. It's going to be able to do all sorts of things. So yeah, we're not like we're not that. too far away. We're not too far away. We're we're about five years away from Google Glass being picked up, uh, being adopted by the mainstream. And what else? What else can we look forward to? Well, I think I think one of the we, we've talked a bit about po podcasting, which is now. Uh, actually rapidly catching on. When we spoke four years ago, it had just been introduced to the market, but now because of the iPhone, which, Shaban, you, you may not be too familiar with, but um, <laughs> but the, the iPhone, they're now over... I can't even turn one on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't even turn one on. That's how bad it is. <laughs> well, well, so there are now over a half a billion people with an iOS device, half a billion people. That, that's a lot of people who use either an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac computer, laptop, iPod, um, not, not the iPod, but the others. Right. Half a billion people. And this number is projected to be close to 1 billion by the end of 2015. So this is a space that is growing rapidly. And Every single iOS device comes with a podcast app. So that's why I truly yes. believe podcasting is going to flourish and take off. And the ease of producing and publishing a podcast is incredibly simple now with cell phone technology, with other technology. It's incredibly simple. So that's something uh, we can be on the lookout for. The other thing, completely kind of unrelated but still dealing with technology, is the idea of uh, what's called a blockchain technology. And mm. uh, the blockchain, you, you've probably heard of these digital currencies like Bitcoin. Um, these currencies are, the Bitcoin is, is backed by what's called a, the blockchain technology. Now this technology is essentially a public ledger that keeps track of all transactions and that, that, that's the easy way that's the easy way to put it now you might say okay well what's so great about that how is that revolutionary it's revolutionary because it's a public ledger that stores information so wow. right now right now it stores transactions but what's being worked on it is the ability to store um, tax records uh, computer files system files uh, legal documents 
I mean, soon enough, people are saying that the internet can be stored in this blockchain technology. What? So, so the technology is incredibly innovative, and it's still in its very, very early stages. But I think in uh, in about 10 to 15 years, this blockchain technology is is going to be kind of the hub of of our lives, of everything we do. We'll be able to make phone calls from there. We'll be able to put put our lives in this blockchain, and it'll be publicly visible so that people can police each other. Right, so right. So let, let's say, for example, uh, let's say you're single and you're about to meet someone up for a date we met online. Well, you can take a look at their blockchain, uh, their blockchain ledger, and you can see exactly, you know, what purchases they made, uh, what kind of, you know, what Whoa. stuff might be there. No, right no, 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 Whoa. no, Whoa. no, Whoa. no, no, I buy oh, Henry bars in blocks of four. <laughs> you know, like I just, well, well, that, that, that just yeah, well, 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 that's just an example. Right, obviously, exactly. privacy, obviously, privacy is an issue, and, and uh, there are ways, it's a very complicated, it was invented by this, nobody actually knows who invented it, his name is Satoshi Nakamoto, but that's a pseudonym, nobody knows who he is. He's, he's uh, wow. Well, you know, I, I think it's you. I know, <laughs> no joke. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. it's really, yeah. No chance, I don't even understand no it fully, but I, that was just an extreme example I gave you, and what, what makes this technology so good is it's actually anonymous, it, it's actually anonymous, so hmm. uh, you're able to transact, Anonymously, so uh, I like that. that. That's so okay. Cool. So That's why it's been so this my, my mind is spinning. Okay, so I I don't even I, I can't even <laughs> fathom what you're talking about. So how do I shift my attitude from this very resistant attitude to this new technology? Like <gasps> no, you'll you'll you know, find out the nights I have to buy cheap wine. <laughs> right? You know what's so <laughs> funny? Siobhan, you know, and Narisha, what's so funny is something so simple. I watched an uproar on Facebook with something so simple with the new messenger. You know, everyone was like, oh, I don't want to use the new messenger because it's going to, you know, they're getting my information or they're doing this and they're doing that. And I was kind of like going, okay, you are, every time you put something out there, it stays out there. So there's no more information going out there than, you know, than your putting out and you're, and you're not protecting yourself. But the best thing I can say about that, and I also would tell people, check it out for yourself. And that's how you're not scared. That's how you don't get scared. That's how you change your attitude, is to go and check it out for yourself. I mean, what can you do? I mean, can you break the internet? I mean, can you really go and do so much damage to something that, you know, you, you well, mess the whole system up? I think sometimes is, we just need yeah. to do it. Yeah, well, th this technology is coming. There's an entire industry dedicated to startup technologies like this. And li like we said earlier, to each his or her own, because uh, I'll embrace the technology, but other people won't. And, and there are ways you can still live a very happy life without embracing any of this technology. I know plenty of people who um, My mom. have the old school <laughs> cell phones, the, the flip phones, and that, that can't text or do anything, and they're completely okay with that. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Uh, moving. Yeah, my mom here. hates my mom hates her iPhone. She, I mean, <laughs> literally. She. Why do Somebody I need? Somebody should why do, do a I story on me. I am able to pitch TV shows. Yeah. I'm able to do a video cast. I'm able to do a podcast. I'm able to to run a business. I'm able to do yeah. all these things, and Great I story. don't own a cell phone. Somebody should be writing about that because it has got to be something that. You know, it only like maybe the senior crowd d does now. You know, yeah, like my mom, <laughs> <laughs> me and Donna's mom. You know, yeah, you, you and my mom. That's it. Even like podcasting, though, Narish, you talk about in your book how the corporations and the small business owners they right. they haven't quite discovered the benefit of podcasting for their businesses and and to promote their their businesses we when we started podcasting we knew right away that it was the way to go because it reached for us it reached so many people around the world I mean we have fans in Mexico City that are constantly following us and watching us and talking to us we have fans from where Ireland and Australia and mm -hmm. India and all over the place and it, it's so cool it's really connected us to people that want to hear our message. But 
you you say in your book that a lot of the corporations just haven't caught on to the co concept of podcasting. Why and when will they? <laughs> Why yeah. not? And when will they? Yeah. So uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, the the iPhone, so or the the iOS, there are now half a billion and. Um, Sorry, yeah, there are now half a billion iOS people with iOS devices, and that number is going to be close to one billion by the end of 2015. And that's huge. That means a lot of people are using this iOS device, which has the podcasting app. So that means there is already a huge market for people who will listen to podcasts or who ha literally have it in their hand, that the capability to listen to a podcast in their hand. Now, going to your question on the corporations, the reason why... So many small businesses, corporations have not caught on to podcasting is because, uh, going back to technology, podcasting is still relatively new. It's, it's, um, it, the first, 2006 is when it first kind of came out. The iPod was, was in full swing. And the people who run these businesses, they're not 25, 30 years old. The people who run these businesses are folks who have decades of experience from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and so they're so behind the times. That's why uh, podcasting has not caught on with a lot of these businesses. The second thing is a lot of a lot of people think, oh well, it's really hard to produce a podcast, or it's really hard to do a Google hang Hangout. They don't really understand mm -hmm. how easy and cost-effective and efficient it is. They they, they don't get it. Um, really, the solution to this is writing a book and explain, explaining that anyone can podcast. If you have a couple of hundred bucks, you have a, a Mac computer, and you have the proper equipment, you can podcast. You're, you're going to have to put in some time to actually record yourself and make it a good podcast, but it can be done. And there are so many one-man podcasts out there who kill it, who do an absolutely amazing job. And like you mentioned... They have fans, listeners from all around the world. So I have several podcasting clients, and I see firsthand how money is being made, how they are connecting with their listeners. The, the Internet is just, it, it, so far, the Internet is the, probably the greatest invention to business to date. Um, and, and podcasting is really a byproduct of the internet and the innovation in the in the smartphone space as well. You know, we had an email from one of our guests, and she said to us, "Whatever you guys are doing, social media wise," uh, she said, "your video is one of the first things people find when they Google my name." Yes. So, yes. so she's been on our show <clears throat> on a Google Hangout. She's been on our podcasts, and she. I mean, she's on all kinds of network shows, on, on talk shows and stuff like that, but where people find her, if you plug her name into, you know, Google, is us, the attitude shift. You know, you see her name and the attitude shift. She, uh, the shows that she's been on are the ones that are at the top of the page of Google. And so that had to help, and it, and it did help her. Oh. Um, it, it helped her because it captured a network. Um, I guess when they Googled her name, that's how it all started. That's how it ended up us doing some of the work that we had to do for her to get ready for this network, is that that's what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's I had exactly. to edit the word yeah. you know, in her bathroom. She does the show in her bathroom. We everywhere. Last week. She does the show everywhere, and often she does it in the bathroom, and she made kind of reference to... A different kind of shift <laughs> and I think that they didn't like that <laughs> it was very funny so I had to take it out I had to edit it out which of course took me a week because I've been so busy but I finally got it done um, and it should make the network very happy because now you know I don't so. say I'm on the toilet okay. she's not on the toilet <laughs> doing yeah. the show which freaks and so people that, out and that, and that goes back to what we're saying just like you're saying you know look at all the things we can do I mean and, and I like the way you said that. It's the attitude of what you accept. You know, you're either going to embrace it, and and my mom won't. She won't Skype. She has, like I said, she has an iPhone. She won't FaceTime. She won't do anything. She doesn't have an email. My dad has Facebook. My mom doesn't. And and so it's it's like you said, embrace it, 
or or not. It's okay. You can still live a happy life. She loves looking at the pictures when we come over. We show her Facebook. She looks at my dad. She's all good with that. But I'm like you. You know, I love technology. I love seeing new things happen, you know, and, and I think it's really cool and I, I can't wait to see what's coming next. Not that I can run out and buy some of these things because they come out and they're so expensive in the beginning, but like like you said, Narisha, everybody's going to be walking around with those cool Google glasses, you know, in five years and it'll be like no big deal. It'll well, be no big deal, just like when VCRs first came out. You know, I was, a, I was a teenager when VCRs first came out and we had one and everybody was at our house like, well, you have a VCR. You know, <laughs> and now you go VC what? <laughs> <laughs> what? You know. So it, so that's a great note to to end on <laughs> VCR, ABC, NBC, um, all the letters of the alphabet. So anyway, let's just uh, say embrace change, embrace the technology, and I'll try, I'm going to try, but I really do think somebody should do an interview on why I don't have a cell phone and how I manage, <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody's watching that wants a good story, call me, uh, thank you so much, Naresh, can you tell people how to find you, and, yeah, so uh, the website is www.podcastnomics.com, that's the official website of the book. Podcastnomics, the book of podcasting, which recently hit number one on the Yay. Amazon bestseller list. So uh, check the book out. It's very affordable pricing. If you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me through the site. There's a contact page, and you can shoot. feel free to shoot me an email. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, LinkedIn. Just Google my name, Naresh Fissa, and you can find me. Um, I'm pretty easy to get in contact with, and thank you guys so much. It was great talking to you again. It's been four years, and awesome, awesome to to be to be on. Well, and who we'll knows? See. We might have that mind telepathy in four more years that we'll just stare. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen in the, four more years. And do the show that again. way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Donna, park it. Oh, okay. All right, we're going to put it in park again. Um, it's just you know whatever to each its own. Embrace it. Have fun with it. Don't embrace it. Still have a good life with it. It's all about your attitude. We shift it every Wednesday night on the Attitude Shift on behalf of Siobhan Shaw and our amazing guest, Narish. Say that last name, Bissa. Narish Bissa. Bissa. See, I said yep, that. I got, got that. It. On behalf of us, we've shifted attitudes tonight. We hope we shifted yours. Until we meet again, peace out.